Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Jayco Terrain, some of the latest updates to it. I'm actually right now in, in it. I'm sleeping in it. I slept in it. I'm heading back from Arkansas. I was out in Arkansas at Backwoods Adventure Mods getting some stuff put on it. So I'm driving home and I'm in Kansas right now. We're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, no, we are. We are in Kansas. We are in Kansas. That's a Wizard of Oz reference if you didn't know. But last night I fulfilled one of three lifelong goals that I have. I have three big like life milestone goals in my life. Uh, and the first one I achieved last night. And it was to spend a night sleeping in the back of the van of a Walmart parking lot. Oh. So, that's what we did. Do you have any idea what my other two life goals are? So here we are in the back seat. I don't have this thing fully dialed in yet, so this window back here has a little shade. And it gets pretty dark in here. It's these are a little brighter on camera than than they are in real life. It's actually it's pretty dark honestly. Uh, but that lets in some light, can let in some air as well. I just put a blanket on the back here. This is also much darker than it looks in real life, but the sun's hitting that right now. So I just put that up kind of to, to black it out and also add a little bit of insulation as well. Uh, that's not really probably my long-term dealio. It's just kind of what I did for now. And then up in the cabin, I have a little curtain up there. So I'll show you. This is a little window covering I had my mom make for me that I kind of cut out this little foil foam. I don't know if you can hear it making some noise. And that kind of fits in that window. This is kind of a phase one trial run. I don't know, I gotta see if there's a company that makes, makes something that fits there. Uh, and then this window has a blind as well. We got some light streaming in from over there. But that'll open up to the beautiful view as well. And then this black curtain here will open up the front. Ah, <sighs> all right. Well, Let's step back in time to yesterday and we'll go to Backwoods. This view out the window is about as Kansas as it gets. But I'm gonna swing into the Golden Arches and get some breakfast. I'm having an interactive video today. Guess what I'm gonna get. Moment of truth. If you guessed Sausage Egg and Cheese McGriddle, we can be friends. It's my favorite breakfast sandwich. It's the sweetness with the saltiness. Mmm. Mmm. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Van got some mods, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I'm actually out here in Arkansas and we are heading over to get a little behind the scenes on on backwoods. Yeah. So, so right. yeah, anyway, my name's Grant. I'm the marketing manager for Backwoods Adventure Mods. I um, also have a YouTube channel called Arkansas Off-Road. So a lot of the same overland kind of stuff I'm sure you guys have seen all over. The I'll link to YouTube. his stuff down in the video description. Yeah, thanks, dude. So, yeah, we're so here and... Thought we'd kind of walk through a little bit of 
the company, maybe some of the breakdown of Backwoods Adventure Mods, how it operates, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Give yeah. us a little tour. We walked through this building already. It's it's yeah. cool. It's a cool spot. Mostly administrative stuff, yeah. though. Technically, I guess Chandler Equipment is the parent company of Backwoods Adventure Mods. So Chandler Equipment's been here 40 years. We have Backwoods. We have Gladiator Valves and Fittings. Um, uh, Chandler vacuum, Chandler truck accessories. So we're like spread uh, pretty wide as far as manufacturing. So toolboxes, like vacuum components, and then cool fun stuff like bumpers and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, Backwoods is the newest kind of funnest, I guess, company along with Chandler truck accessories. But yeah, so this is kind of the administrative building. Um, we're in the middle of a 30,000 foot uh, expansion, so. We're also about to walk over this ice rink here, so we gotta be careful. That's just really sketch. And I don't have hands if I fall, so. Yeah. I'm back. Arkansas got their first snowstorm of the decade. We don't know what to do with snow in Arkansas. It's really weird. But yeah, so all this used to be like trees and parking lot and all kinds of stuff, but it's gonna be extended from this building on over there for way more production capacity. So we make toolboxes and manways and all kinds of stuff in this building. Back there is one of our warehouses. And this long building is the backwoods kind of side. So we make all the bumpers and stuff right there from start to finish, so. Sweet. Yeah. And I just got my run and gun set up. So I'm trying to just point my camera at Grant. So even though he's pointing at stuff, is that we want to hear what he's saying okay. too. No, just because people will say that in the comments. They'll be like, maybe you should point your camera at what he's talking about. I'm like, oh. Then you won't hear him. Anyways, we're going to walk over to uh, kind of backwards production facility, lasers and everything. It's end of the day on a Friday right now after a big snowstorm. So I don't think there's anyone here. Yeah, it's a ghost town. Uh, so we're gonna go turn on some lights and just show you a little behind the scenes. All right, so we're in uh, the Backwoods production facility. So everything starts kind of front to back. So right here where we're standing, um, we get the raw material kind of loaded in. So all the sheets of metal, aluminum and steel um, gets kind of stacked up over there and then it gets transferred to the laser and then all these pieces get cut out. So we, we have a bunch of these cutouts kind of ready to go. It's a big laser. Yeah, it's huge. That's one of two. Yep. We've got a new toy over there. That's our second laser, so lots of capacity. Yeah, so what it basically does is we can cut materials in a third of the time and thicker materials well on this 10K versus the 4K. Gotcha. So, okay, yeah. yep. cool. And before we get too much further, everything's a total mess like i said we're doing the expansion so like we're like yeah. running around like crazy so after the parts get cut from the laser either this one or this one this is the newest toy um we go to the brake press um so we have two different brake presses here and we got a new folder machine too which is really cool yep. um, yeah i'll have grant grab some footage of these things in operation so the roll action. They look more than just big pieces of equipment. Pretty shiny pieces of equipment. So this is kind of the finishing station. So a lot of stuff will get tacked up after it got bent and everything. So we have different welding bays here. Um, we get tacked up, welded, um, grinded, and kind of finished and prepped for powder coat. So over here is our robot cell. So we'll fully weld them, we'll tack them up and then weld them. Uh, with the robot, check for alignment and everything. So he's just sleeping right now? Yeah, yeah. Taking just, a nap. just taking a nap right now. We love you, robot. <laughs> and the next cell is uh, for grinding, sanding, finishing. So we do robotic grinding and sanding. Okay. Once it's finished grinding and sanding, we'll bring them out here and um, do any finish grinding work and sanding work that we've got to do in order to finish the bumpers for powder coat. Nice. So now we're over in the a second of what like four buildings or so of backwoods. Uh, this is where they do a bunch of bunch of stuff, and this isn't just backwoods. It's kind of other Chandler stuff, but they do make the the backwoods boxes here, 
and we forgot to intro. We didn't know his actual official title, so we're gonna hear it. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, so hi guys, I'm Josh. Uh, I work for Backwoods as product development and manufacturing engineering. Um, so I work on not just products, but also work on improving our manufacturing capabilities. Man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So manufacturing engineer was it yeah 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 right. product development and manufacturing engineer is okay. the official I title feel that. i feel that title yeah mm -hmm. i feel that title yeah he's gonna clean up this whole place he's trying, to, he's trying to clean it up awesome yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the goal sweet. the new expansion yeah. sweet sweet hey guys all right we're back here uh in the driveway this is a week or two later, honestly. So I kind of just want to go over the mods in kind of more depth, catch you up to speed on a few other things that I did inside as well. This is just a build update, maybe build update number two of the van. And <laughs> I haven't taken this out yet camping. I just got home from doing a little Tacoma camping trip. I got to try and balance. I got I to gotta try and make the viewers happy sometimes. So you guys have been wanting the Tacoma trip. So that weekend or lander, I think, is the next... The next video I'm gonna post after this is a little camping trip in the Tacoma, and then I'm planning to go camping in this very soon as well. It's, it's pretty much, I mean, let me backtrack. This is a Jayco Terrain 4x4. It's a Class B van, ready to go, turnkey, very capable, built out, ready to go right off the RV dealership lot. I like to modify things, so I've been tweaking on it a little bit, obviously, as you'll see in this video. So now it's like, it's pretty, much, it's pretty much where I want it to be. I'm gonna toss a little bit bigger tires on, change the wheels, uh, do maybe some suspension modifications and then a few other little things. But this is kind of like phase one is pretty much complete here, which we're gonna, we're gonna walk through right now. All right, so here's the van. You've seen the wrap already. So this is a custom Topo wrap that was installed by my boy Jake at Lucid Wraps. Uh, if you haven't seen the wrap and want more info on it, check back. I'll put this in a playlist as well. I kind of talk about the wrap design and choice. It's a topo print that was developed by my friend Gabe Tam, tamfamgram.com, and it's more green in real life than it's showing on the camera. Anyway, that wrap was installed, and then we took it over to Backwoods Adventure Mod. So I have a coupon code with Backwoods, they're homies. They, they hooked this whole van up. Um, and I, I have a coupon code that saves you 10% on Backwoods as well as Pathfinders, and that's just L-L-O-D. So I'll, I'll put that down in the video description below. But we'll start up front here. This is a big beefy bumper. So the bumper that replaced the stock Mercedes bumper is really big, big, huge chunk of plastic. So this kind of follows a little bit of the aesthetic of that, but you know, makes it a little, makes it a little beefier looking and adds some functionality. So most of it is aluminum, kind of it's like a steel skeleton with kind of an alumin aluminum outer shell. So this is all aluminum here but the recovery points where it mounts to the frame, the winch plate and mounting, that's all steel. So it's kind of a lighter weight bumper than all steel obviously, but has some of the strength of steel kind of where it counts. And then in here we have two sets of lights, a spot and a flood. These are both amber. These are from Pathfinder. They're kind of the lights that fit the cutouts here. So those, I actually haven't wired those up yet. So they're just mounted in there. I need to wire them up and aim them and stuff. Basically two sets of fog lights, one on each side. I went with a spot and a flood to kind of change it up a little bit. And then inside here, we have a Warren VR Evo 12S. So it's a Warren synthetic 12,000 pound winch tucked in there nicely. It keeps the whole thing Pretty flush. I opted to not go for the bull bar here just because I kind of like the aesthetics of this. And I'm planning to add some KC Flex Aerofors here and here on the ditch mount brackets that I already have. And then so that doesn't affect any of the sensors or the front camera or anything like that. So that's kind of nice. And then we have Factor 55 goodies here. So we have the Fairlead as well as the Ultra Hook. The Ultra Hook is my favorite thing. Factor 55 is an awesome company, awesome group of dudes over there, and uh, make a great Made in America product. The Ultra Hook uh, encompasses basically their closed system winching, as well as your kind of standard hook here, which I, I just like 
I like using hook for little stuff around the house, pulling out trees, little this or little that. A hook is still super, super handy. When you need to do real recoveries, I always opt for their closed system winching setup. So this is, you put a shackle, you could put a steel shackle or a soft shackle through here, and that keeps everything contained. There's no hooks that are gonna come off or break or whatever though. Their ultra hook also has a little pin you can slide through here. So as far as hooks go, this is the most secure hook that you're ever gonna find. But their closed system setup is even a little bit more secure. So whenever I'm doing a recovery, I'll opt for the closed system setup here. And maybe I'll do a whole video on recovery at some point in the future. But I just, this is just like kind of an awesome little package. It has little finger grooves on the top to remind you when you're hooking, hook the hook from the bottom. This goes for this hook and all hooks because if it breaks, this is gonna be the weak point that it breaks and it's gonna shoot out in that direction. So by putting these finger grips here, it reminds you to hook from underneath. So that way if heaven forbid, it breaks, it'll shoot that energy into the ground rather than hooking over the top. If it breaks, it's gonna shoot it through the air and then mess you up. So quick little spiel about them, but they got me hooked up, appreciate them, and their products are just the best. And then over here, actually, I put a massive ham antenna. I'm a ham operator. Uh, and so I like hams in my vehicle. So I'll show you the interior setup. This is a big one. I wanted to get one that was super tall. So it's actually just a little bit shorter than the height of the van, but I like to be able to look out the window and kind of use the top of the antenna as a rough uh, kind of estimate on height of the vehicle. So I can basically judge it, how much room I have clearance there, whether the van will fit under or not but it is a big old antenna. So we'll see how that does kind of once things get bumpy. So then on the sides, we also have a backwoods ladder. So this is a big beefy, chunky ladder. I mean, I love the aesthetics of the ladder a ton. It kind of fits with the front bumper and the rear bumper. And I like that it has nice wide flat steps so you can step on this barefoot or whatever. It has these kind of notches here to grip onto the edge of your shoe a little better. And I'll probably toss some sandpaper on here. Talon has this ladder as well. And he says tossing a little sandpaper on here adds even a little bit of a better grip. So you can see it's clearance here for the Jayco everything. So it works, it works nicely with the setup down here. And then let's climb up here. So up top here, this is their Drifter Series roof rack. So this is the ladder designed for their roof rack, though they do have this top portion of the ladder kind of, they have a couple different options for a couple different rack systems. So the rack system that comes on the Jayco is honestly, a, it's a pretty good, like very capable rack system. I didn't really feel like I needed to change it for one reason or another, but while we were there, and since I'm kind of doing this thing with Jayco, we wanted to see if this rack system would bolt up. So you guys will know if you wanna swap racks, whether this will work or not. And the answer is it, it works perfectly. So it bolts in to these channels that the Jayco van will come with. And then it has these crossbars. The crossbars are adjustable. This one's actually in the wrong spot. So I need to either remove it or slide it so this can open and that can open. And I also haven't added the solar panels back here yet. So up front, this is um, a Pathfinder light bar as well that's up here, nice and low profile. And then again, these bars can be adjusted to wherever you need them. So up top here, I gotta add the solar panels back on. This little solar panel is one that comes on the Jayco and it's actually just kind of a trickle charger for the starter battery. And then the rest of the solar panels up here hook into the big giant lithium house battery. So right now there's no solar panels, but the alternator charges the batteries up really quick. Um, and that's what's going on up here. A quick note, there is a little thing that you do have to modify in the back to get this set up to work. So this bar, you could push the whole rack system back a little bit, but I kind of liked it. Uh, doesn't affect anything. You don't have to mess with any of the internals or anything. It's just you cut out a little bit of the plastic kind of outer shell and then that'll fit right up. One other thing up here actually, which I forgot to tighten this back down because I just did this and I got to actually put a little thing in this one. This is a little pass through. So I drilled a hole in the roof of the van, installed this and passed through a cable. So the cable coming out of here 
is actually a WeBoost antenna. I gotta, I gotta run this wire a little better, but I put a WeBoost antenna back here. I actually just drilled a hole and mounted it directly in there. So this is pretty low, as you can see. It's the highest point on the van, but I wanted to keep it kind of as low as possible. Quick note on the WeBoost antennas, because I think some people don't quite understand this. It's best to have the antenna, this thick part, above any other obstructions, right? This is the antenna portion. The less interference in a 360 degree view it can get, the better it'll work. For instance, if a cell phone tower is way over that way, it's fine. If a cell phone tower is over that way, you wanna make sure it's a little bit above that. So this is a good height, but unlike the antenna of a giant ham radio antenna, the longer this antenna is, the actually the better the better signal it'll give you. So a long antenna makes sense here, but I see some people on vans running the extensions on these to where they're like four feet up off the van. That's not really gonna help you. It doesn't extend. All of the power in the antenna on a WeBoost is relegated to that little portion there. So you really just wanna get your antenna high enough to where nothing around it is gonna interfere with it, but you certainly don't need it three feet uh, in the air. So just, <laughs> mount it to where it's high enough. Mounting it another three feet higher won't, won't do anything for you. So that's that mount. And yeah, so the Backwoods Drifter Rack is super low profile, which I like. It's very trim, uh, doesn't extend too high, so it kind of has a nice aesthetic. And I like that all these bars are adjustable as well, and they're pretty beefy. You can see my whole weight, I'm kind of bouncing up and down on one bar here. And then out back, we got the backwoods rear bumper as well, which is really svelte in here. So we have some uh, Pathfinder reverse lights, which again, I need to wire up all the lighting still has retains. Actually the front and the rear bumper retain all the parking sensors, blind spot monitor. So it's really nice, you keep all your features. So I love, I love when you can swap bumpers, but keep all of the kind of OEM features. And then down here, it maintains the factory hitch. So you keep all your factory rated uh, towing and everything like that, because this is just a factory component that is actually unaffected at all with the bumper. The bumper does add a nice lower rear step here. So that's a big, big problem with anyone with bumpers. Not really a problem, but it's a pretty high access into the van. So there's a lot of different solutions like hitch steps and other steps and everything. Backwoods has it integrated right into their bumper. So a nice little step to get into the van easier. So really sweet rear bumper setup. <laughs> a lot of people ask me about the Indiana plate because yes, I am a Colorado resident and all my vehicles are registered here. You'll see this is a manufacturer dealer plate. So this van is owned by Jayco for now. So it's registered to Jayco in Indiana. So that's a sweet little setup. We did mount the awning to the rack as well. So that looks pretty much like it did from the factory. And let me just kind of hold the camera up so you can get a whole roof rack view of what's going on. Really great looking rack system. So those are kind of most of the exterior mods I got going on so far. And now let's, let's go inside and I'll show you a couple things that I've changed in there. So in the back here, I've actually, I built this little bench slash microwave slash storage setup, which I'll kind of get into here in a second. I actually have my projector up there. I was watching some stuff on my little pseudo projector screen, which I'll show you later when we're actually out camping. But so this bed raises to the roof and comes right down. It comes down right to flush with this little guy. So this is a lagoon table. I bought this and this is actually a cutting board that I turned into a table basically. So I'll, I'll raise this up and kind of show you how the system works. But basically when the bed is up, it converts this area to kind of a hangout living room bench. So it kind of extends the living room space. There's a company, Canyon Adventures or Canyon Van Adventures, that does a similar thing for the Winnebago Revel. I haven't reached out to them and asked them if they're making one or if that one works for the Jayco as well, but they basically sell a solution. It's pretty expensive. I think there's a fair lead time on it. Really good setup though. 
but I kind of just wanted to DIY and see how this worked. So I basically put this in, built it out of some plywood. I did kind of antique white stain it so it blends in a little bit and out of this table. So let me show you some of the features I built into this thing. So this is what it is normally. Gear track, this is L track along this side, same as over here, excuse the mess. And then you got some pockets in here to store some things. I'm gonna remove this whole panel so that way I can get my bench all the way up close to that. So the lagoon table, there's actually a second lagoon table up in the front, which uh, if I remember, I'll show it to you as well. That comes with the van. The van comes with the lagoon table uh, that you set up in the front. But by default, this is just a big garage area and I kind of obviously, like I said, wanted to convert it into kind of a little living room. So I added the bench on here. You could add another like mini bench on this side though. I've sat on those ones and they're not as comfortable, but I don't know if I'll expand this or not. I think I'll just keep one side so I can still have a fair bit of storage garage space back here. And I'll probably put the dog's bed back here as well. So this is kind of a big enough space right now for my dogs to sleep, my big 100 pound dog to turn around and stuff. So I'll probably keep it like this. So you retain the factory tie down points. I actually bolted this to the factory tie down point and I did add another L track along here in case I wanna just like tie some stuff down and I also use that to kind of beef up the top portion. The lagoon table, anyone that has a van kind of knows how these things work, but they articulate all the way around. This thing can spin around. This can go up and down. And the cool thing is, is I'm sitting here, swing this table around, put a laptop or whatever here, have a nice little reply to emails with a nice little view of the butt of my Land Cruiser. But also you can just kind of push it out of the way put your drinks on it or whatever. So this is kind of, I'm sitting here obviously hanging out. This has enough to seat probably three very comfortably, like two adults and a kid, uh, but plenty of room for two people to kind of spread out and hang out here. So this is just actually a, I sized it 48 inches. This is a pad I just got on Amazon that was 48 inches and so it fits on this perfectly. 40 inches is nice because it's the width of a sheet of plywood so kind of a perfect size to make some stuff. I built it before the lagoon table so this has to be high enough for clearance on that when you open it, just FYI. And you do gotta notch this little side over here for clearance on that. Real quick note actually, so this battery it's kind of interesting, when you plug it into shore power, the battery itself has a built-in heater. And when you plug it into shore, that will power the battery heater and heat up the battery if it needs to be heated up to charge it. But you can't turn the internal battery heater on without that. So I bought this, I've actually just been testing it out. So I'll have to report back to you later. But this is actually, I, I researched, I tried to find a perfectly fitting thing for the battery because the battery is super big here. So this is, I believe was, I believe it's a 48 inch by 11 inches in height, which almost perfectly covers the entire this side of the battery. And it's really like a germination mat for seeds or something. So it's pretty low wattage draw, doesn't put out a ton of heat, but I'm kind of testing it because I like the slimness and how well it kind of fits the battery to see if that'll keep it warm when I need to. Granted, if your van's on and your heater's running, this whole space will kind of heat on and keep that battery at the temperature it needs to. Basically, it can keep on pumping out energy down to like zero degrees Fahrenheit, but it will not take a charge until it's up to like 30 some degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. So you need to keep it a little bit warm in order to put a charge into it, which again, if plugged into shore, it handles that automatically. But otherwise, kind of you need a heating system here. I'll kind of talk to Jayco and see, see what they kind of recommend there or if they have a different solution that they're kind of working on. Uh, I have, I am partnered with Jayco. This is a Jayco van. I'm, I'm working with Jayco, a Jayco partner. I don't know how else to say it, but I kind of talk to their product development team. So I'll give them a little bit of feedback on that. But it's basically a little heater I put in. The little cable is coming out the side of this panel and I have it plugged in actually right here. So this is an extension cord 
that I actually made. So that goes inside and actually runs kind of behind here to a plug. So there's a plug here, just a standard default Jayco plug. That's what the microwave and that extension is plugged into. So this you can see has a bunch of storage. I have tool cases like air hoses, battery pad, like a bunch of a bunch of stuff in here. This is like a big storage inside of the garage, a garage in a garage. And then here I have the microwave. So there's a little bit of room above it if you want to put even more stuff. I've kind of strapped it in. You can see the strap on either side. So it's pretty strapped in pretty securely. And I, this microwave specifically, I spent a lot of time researching microwaves. And microwaves, just regular microwaves, there's all kinds of teeny tiny ones and everything. I wanted one that has an air fryer built into it. So this is like microwave convection and air fryer all in one. And this is basically the smallest one I could find. So this fits the fit space perfect. So it's flush with this hallway door. It's all the way back here. I have used it. I think it's good on venting and everything. If it gets too hot, there's kind of access out here to vent or I could crack the top all the way if I need to. But that's kind of, I'll experiment a little more. But I'll link to this one down below if you're interested. It's a Galanz. I don't, I mean, I bought it. Uh, I forget where, Amazon or Walmart. And it's nice, nice little setup. Uh, so it's kind of an air fry microwave. So, and then underneath, I built a little shelf with a little bit more storage. So I have some Indeflate air up tools that kind of just fit, fit nicely, nice and tight under there. And then here is one of the heater vents. So I made a little channel. It's actually a little angle channel here that passes that air out. And so it's bolted, you can't really see it, it's under, bolted, secured down below there. And then over, oh, I put a little rubber mat, but it's bolted down there as well. Just again, into the default kind of tie down rack system. So this is really a super basic thing that I just built in a couple hours, kind of proof of concept type deal. And I'll probably put something, so I removed this panel. Right now there's a, by default, there's a panel here with some pockets. I wanted to push this all the way back and also allow a little bit more airflow back here to the battery. So I'll probably figure out some type of a cover for this. So that way I'm not like dropping, dropping stuff back into here. But this is how it is for now. And again, I can link to, you know, some of this stuff down below except for the sheet of plywood. And then yeah, here's that bar. So part of it, this the reason I put this in was to kind of strengthen this little area here. So now it's plenty beefy to sit on this, bounce around on it or whatever. So this is actually a super comfortable kind of hangout spot back here now, out the back with a nice little view. You know, you can prop yourself up, have a little cup of coffee over here and I really, really like this kind of back hangout area in the Jayco. And then again, miniature projector shoots and basically turns this window cutout into a projection screen. And that's a cool little setup too. And then a couple other things I did, I put in this kind of blackout curtain here. So this Jayco comes with like this curtain rod here. You do have to pop a couple little screws out to kind of thread the curtain on, but I have this on. So this basically can cover up this and kind of black this whole area out. Super quick and easy to do. And then I just, so I add a little Velcro strap basically to tuck this in. So that's kind of flush and just kind of goes down in this little pocket down here. This, I forgot, I had all my stuff unhooked last time, but this window is a power window. So it's like a power slider right here. It's kind of nice, has a mesh screen built in, has a second mesh screen as well there, and then has that that you can pull down to kind of black it out or whatever. So sweet. And you can, I think you can disconnect this mesh screen if you want to, yeah. It's like magnetized, so then you can open, take it out there and then put it back. Sweet, and then little power window guys over here. 
And then, so this is the whole Firefly system. If you saw the last Jayco van I had, it's very similar. So you have some info on your battery, your tank levels, and then some controls. Here, you can turn all of your lights on or off. And then you can also get into specifically controlling each light outside and inside here. You can long press to dim them or just tap them to turn them on or off. This controls the AC which again is a DC AC, DC AC <laughs> runs off the battery. Don't have to plug into shore or anything like that. This controls your awning in and out. And here you can kind of get into some settings. There's little apps. You can control all this stuff from your phone. You can check the, the faults and some diagnostics and stuff. So it's a really cool, it's like a, I think it's the Firefly setup here. Here's some other stuff. This controls turning on and off the battery. This is the 3000 watt inverter over here. You tap it to turn it off and on. This is the diesel or electric heater. So this is heats your cabin, heats the air, heats the water. And so you can either run it off a of diesel or you can run it off of power, uh, like shore power, or you can tap them both and it'll kind of run on either or, kind of choosing if it has enough power, it'll run on power or it'll kind of flip between the diesel does offer higher BTUs than the shore. I think it's just like a 1500 watt kind of shore power electric, but the diesel cranks out some serious BTUs. All right, so up here I added this panel. Let me zoom in, see if we can get some focus on this. I added this panel here and what I did basically is this is a USB. These are two cigarette lighters. I added two cigarette lighters because it kind of gives you the flexibility like this is a really good USB-C charger and then I have USB-A chargers up here. And then I wired up some Anderson ports as well. So I have my ham radio. This is a Yaesu FTM 300. And I, sorry, this is kind of not its final home. But I wired this into an Anderson so I can kind of plug and unplug this. In the, in the world of ham nerds, they love their Anderson. So I wired two of them up here. It's kind of a nice, it's a cool plug because you can power a variety of stuff from it. So if someone else wanted to bring their ham radio or use this to charge something or power something, I just have two of them up there. So this is a panel that I added on, ran the wires behind here and hooked it into the 12 volt panel underneath. Pretty simple. This is a button that I wired in as well that I'm gonna in the future install some like custom accent LED light strips. Haven't done that yet. And this button here, sorry, like exposure is all crazy because this is like bright and this is dark up here. This is a button that I wired in to turn on the Wii Boost. So I hardwired the power for the Wii Boost. It flashes a couple times until it connects, but. Basically that switch now is wired to the big battery so I can run WeBoost off grid or whatever if I want to. And there's a little internal antenna that I just have over here that we can move around for better, better connection if we need to. So I just mounted it up there and actually ran that wire up through and made that hole. So that's the hole that goes through the roof, through the ceiling into the roof. So that's just kind of mounted, tucked away off to the side here. This is the big battery control that you can see kind of all the information on the big battery, bed control, and that is actually the little charger for the uh, starter battery, that little solar panel that I showed you on the roof. So this right here, the Euroloft bed, you control it by that, you press that down, and this bed will come down. Camera's having a hard time focusing with this weird light, I guess. But this bed basically can keep all the bedding on it and drop the bed down. I need to collapse that table back there to get the bed all the way down. But basically the bed comes down here and then makes this whole area into your sleeping platform, which is super cool. You could leave it down or put it back up when you're traveling or you want kind of that room to hang out in the back. So it's kind of a really cool bed setup that kind of allows that back area to be dual function 
really nice full sleeping bed platform as well as a nice little hangout platform here actually if you're wondering what this thing is on the ground it's called a kabunk i'm not going to set it up right now but i'll show you later when we're camping in it actually that basically you flip these chairs around and it turns this front area into basically a bunk bed for kid kid size like i, I couldn't fit in there but Basically, I forget the specs, but two kids, like medium-sized kids, uh, can fit in here, and it provides two more sleeping spots. So basically, a sleeping, it's kind of like a cot, basically. So a cot here, and then a second level of cot up above it. So this seats four comfortably, nice seat belts, shoulder harness seat belts. These seats, again, if you haven't seen them, actually spread out wider. So and then this can come out. Both of the seats can come out for more room. And then if you want to recline them, so you can get, <laughs> the passengers can get real comfy in here in these seats and have really good secure shoulder harnesses. So yeah, with the Kabunk, which I'll report back after we actually use it and stuff, now your van can seat four and sleep for some people are like oh why is why do you make a van that seats four but only sleeps two it's because maybe you're not sleeping everyone or you can bring a tent or you're just going out on a day trip or whatever there's a lot of reasons i mean four seats i wanted a van that just didn't have two seats because it's not just me and ashley it's ashley and me isabella and you know we'll probably try and pop out another kid soon so we need a four seater right Cool. Oh, I forgot I did want to show the dash cam, the 70 My, uh, what was it? Pro Plus A500S, I think. So this is the front facing camera and I actually kind of screwed this up. Sorry, I have the exposure super high so you can see it. But my windshield wiper comes right here. I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> I put it, I knew it was going to be up in this blue thing. I'll show some video now, but I didn't wasn't paying attention, it's actually above where my windshield wiper hits. So up here is gonna be a little dirty. So I'll probably reposition it to be a little bit lower <laughs> so that it can be where my windshield wiper cleans. So just heads up, quick tip on that. But I told you guys I'd show some footage and, and a quick update on that later. And here is the back one, just in the back windshield right now, just kind of pointed straight out and I'll overlay some, some footage on that. but. I just wanted to give a quick update on that dash cam that I said I would show once I kind of wired it up. But I'm probably going to mess with this a little more and, and change it around a bit. Oh, last little thing I guess worth touching on is installed this little, this little Vancellary mod. It basically is a little midway stop for the door. So that way the door only opens enough to kind of get in and out, which works really nice for these setups that has the cabinet here. And then you just push it a little further if you want to open the van all the way up, use the drop down table, everything like that. Sweet guys, I know this was a long one, but thanks for sticking with me to the end. Hope you enjoyed it. All these mods, uh, probably the next time you see this van, I'll be out camping with it. So yeah, Jayco Terrain 4x4, kind of probably phase one-ish of the mods complete. Can't wait to get the KC Highlights Flex Air 4s up here and here. I'll report back on that when I have them. But if you have any questions, comments, things that I absolutely need to do, uh, there's a few other things like I got the Fender mod from Agile to fit the bigger tires there. I'll talk more on tires and suspension and stuff in the future when I do that. But if you have recommendations or things that you think I should do or add or questions or anything like that, leave them down below. Get subscribed to the YouTube channel, as always. I'll link to everything down there. Coupons and stuff at llod.us slash coupons. Sweet. Now, time to pull the van back under cover and prepare for this, this snowstorm that's coming any minute now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.